What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we spent a lot of time in the control room and eventually made it out. And in this episode, why do people betray each other? <laughs> I can't get over it. I, I literally see that like every time I boot up the game, and it's just, it's really funny. But, uh, an Ambidex gate has been opened, and we were about to see what happens now that we've completed the control room. We're on our second timeline, and... Well, things have definitely proceeded a little bit differently than the first time around. Forty-five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Huh? So yeah, this is a huge difference from the first timeline we were in, right? We had no notion of what was going on with the Ambidex game. Did Quark collapse? Are they? Is, is he being treated? Did Alice collapse? I have no idea what's going on. Do we just take an exceptionally long amount of time to get through the control room compared to the other people going through the garden and the treatment center? I have no idea what's going on, but maybe we'll actually get our second Ambidex game here. Huh? What's going on? Maybe someone from another team opened one of them. They must have found a moon card. Well, why the heck would they just go and open one of the doors on their own? We should get back upstairs. Yeah, that's actually incredibly alarming. Somebody wanted to start the Ambidex game early. What what advantage would there be to not having the other people participate in the Ambidex game? I guess if you wanted to be one of the few people to rise to nine points and intentionally wanted to prevent other people from doing so by not letting them participate in the Ambidex game. Because the people who you're going to be playing in the Ambidex game, your partners, or your opponents rather, um, are the people that you went through a particular room with. So whoever is starting the Ambidex game is somebody whose opponent is also available. It's not like you'll be able to finish the room early enough that your opponent won't be there and will thus default ally, right, for you to take advantage of. So, I'm not sure I see the, the rationale here, unless you intentionally want to be the only person to escape. Whoever jumped the gun is probably in the warehouse. Right. Alright, let's go. Yeah, we gotta run. Figure out who's doing what and why. Any day now. <laughs> Alright, so we're back to the warehouse. And what in the world is going on here? We leapt out of the magenta door and into the warehouse. There stood Temyoji, Dio, and Clover. Okay, so that trio. Hey! What the heck is this? Why'd you open one of the AB rooms before the rest of us got back? Clover and I haven't done anything. Yeah, Sigma, it's not incredibly helpful to to jump to, I don't know, an aggressive assertment right off the bat. I feel like Temyoji, Clover, and Dio are waiting to see who else arrives because, well, whoever arrives, arrives in response to that uh, announcement is obviously not in the AB room. I'm sure whoever started the AB game is actually in the AB room already, so they had no idea who that was, and only by, well, waiting, they would find out. Not to mention, they could also just discuss their ally betray decision, all that stuff in here if they wanted to, but who knows. Dio, Dio didn't feel like waiting, I guess. <laughs> hmm. You got a problem? Oh, so I took my... <laughs> I completely misinterpreted that. So Dio activated it right off the bat. And Clover and Temoji weren't able to stop him. I mean, understandable, but why is Dio so assertive about starting the Ambidex game right now? Yes, yes I do have a problem. Why? I don't remember saying anything about waiting until everyone got back to open the AB rooms. Yeah, but why wouldn't you? Are you kidding me? We didn't talk about it because we thought it was common sense. 
Sigma's right. We were able to get quick get that quickly, but the others could still be stuck somewhere. And it's worth noting, Quark and Alice were the people who were infected with Radical Six in the previous timeline. Now they're both in the same room, K could be in quite the predicament, right? What if they can't get back in time? No sooner were the words out of her mouth. Oh, thank goodness. I mean, luckily they're here in time. But at the same time, that doesn't make it okay what Dio did, right? <clears throat> You're all here. Did something happen? Yes. It's Quark, you see. He... What? What happened to Quark? So here's... Oh, I'm trying to remember from our original timeline. What was Dio assigned to on the original timeline? He might have been in the control room, whereas wherever they were in the treatment center, it allowed him to, well, have this option of starting the AV game early. But maybe it was whatever room he was in last time that was different from the room he's in this time that prevented him from doing so in the previous timeline. He collapsed. Okay, so Quark still collapses. It happened so suddenly, we were just searching our room. Well, what? So now we have this whole craze going on, except the Ambidex game has already started and we only have 45 minutes, as opposed to the other timeline where nobody was paying any mind to the Ambidex game. Please, you must hurry to the infirmary. His condition could change at any moment. Oh, and this time Alice is watching over Quark, not Clover. You should go. Oh no. Temyoji shoved Kei aside and leapt through the yellow door. The rest of us exchanged a few startled looks, then ran off after him. Quark! Come on, kid! Get a hold of yourself! Temyoji grabbed Quark's shoulders and began to shake him desperately. It was Clover who stopped him. Okay. So, yeah, as soon as it was Clover, I figured that it was the same. But, um... Huh. So now things are a little bit different, right? So let's briefly check the log to reacquaint ourselves. So they're asking about what they found elsewhere, probably looking for Excelivir, right? Yeah. And so... They didn't find anything. What about the other rooms? Uh, Sigma, what about you? Did you find anything? You mean in the control room? All that had was a bunch of stuff for controlling the generator. Okay. I don't think anybody would put medicine there. What about you, Kay? Was there any medicine in your room? I'm terribly sorry. There was nothing of sort in the archives in the archives. So this is interesting because my impression from the previous timeline was that one group would be in the gardens, one group was going to be in the treatment center, and then one group was going to be somewhere else. And I didn't know where that somewhere else is. Because we ended up in the control room, I thought that was my solution, that those were the three rooms to work with. However, in this timeline, we get now confirmation that one of us, our group was in the control room, the other was in the archives, and I have no idea where the other one was, right? Books and so on in abundance, but no medicine. Oh god. Then he's... he's going to... Look, just to be sure, where did the three of you go? Okay, some place called the Bee Garden. So this was Clover, Dio, and Tenyoji who were in the garden. And they were, okay, in the previous timeline, we emerged from the garden after solving it the same time as another group. So they would be relatively early in this timeline, potentially, too. It was kind of like a park with trees and stuff. But, yeah. No medicine. Maybe some medicinal plants? 
Temio D slumped to the ground. For a moment, there was silence. Is this going to be the same? It is. So Quark's obviously not doing so hot. Somebody takes the scalpel away. And they inject him with the anesthetic. Everybody's shocked. And Alice, again, hang on a second. Alice, again, is the one infected by Radical Six. However, what's interesting is we haven't seen anything of her up until this point, right? Since, you know, our solving our own chromatic door puzzle, right? She was supposedly the one looking after Quark while Clover and Temyoji and Kay were, and, and all, everybody else were in the warehouse, right? Or was she not? Was she somewhere else? Interesting. We haven't really ha heard anything about that. So, anyways, now they go to the lounge. No one here, huh? So, Sigma's looking around. Again, let's refresh with the log. At Phi's commands, we scattered, filtering off into the different doors. As I ran, I thought, where should I look for Alice? Perhaps the lounge would be a good bet. Okay, so no one here, huh? Darn. Where did she go? No point in complaining. I just need to look somewhere else. Okay? I turned and headed toward the exit. Where are we going to go this time? And what's going to be different about this sequence, right? Just because th some things haven't changed, right? We don't know that these events will turn out differently. We've established that the future can change the past. Huh. What are the events? Are we still going to find her in the garden with Fi? I don't know. I really don't. So this time we go in the green door, which is going to take us to the garden? No! The archives! So this is our first time looking at the archives, not looking at the treatment center. Interesting. Actually, very, very interesting, because if nobody looked at the treatment center, nobody can reference the treatment center for potentially saving Quark slash Alice, right? Nobody can bring up, oh, why don't we just use one of those pods? It also eliminates that whole conversation that Temyoji had about uh, Alice being made of Ice-9, right? Although Temyoji was with Clover for this past puzzle, so that would provide the opportunity for them to share that information should Clover want to. But anyway, so this is the archives, huh? K, Quark, and Alice search this room. I see another lion. Of course. And that red book seems to be standing out as well as that blue one. Maybe this will be helpful when we eventually have to solve it ourselves, but... I don't immediately note anything. That's a neat looking desk. We have another scale for weighing things. Darn. Nothing here either. We need to find her quick, or she's gonna do something bad. If she loses it like Quark did, and nobody's around to stop her... Yeah, that would be less than ideal. Crap, I need to hurry. Okay, I decided to try the garden where Clover, Temyoji, and Dio had gone after passing through their door. I bet the person with her is going to be different. And then we have the question of what about the scalpel, right? Yeah, if the routes are different this time around because the explored rooms are different, the potential dropping of the scalpel could be in a different place. The first thing I noticed when I stepped inside was the smell. Plant life was everywhere, and the air was filled with the fresh scent of it growing, underlaid with the sweet, dry tones of dead leaves underfoot. While the air outside had been dry and harsh, in here it was warm and wet, like a forest after a spring rain. Just like Clover said, plants and stuff everywhere. Anyone? I walked slowly down the path, still slightly stunned. Most of the facility had been cold, dull metal, but this room was positively verdant. Man, hard to believe there's something like this here. What the heck is this even for? As strange as the garden was, Alice needed to be my priority. I reined my thoughts back in, and continued down off the path and into the grass. I'd only gone a few steps when I stopped short. And here we are. Okay, so this is awfully familiar, right? Alice! 
Oh, there you are. All right, so here's the moment of truth. It's different. I can't skip. Let's pay attention. Good. I'm glad you showed up. Huh? I just got here a minute ago. She was like this when I found her. When you showed up, I was getting ready to take her to the infirmary. And then she's uh, alive so far, it's the same. Yeah. Her breathing and pulse seem normal. She doesn't appear to have any obvious external wounds, so she's just unconscious. Looks like it. What about the scalpel? Doesn't look like she has it. I figure she probably dropped it on the way here. So far, this is the exact same excuse, or excuse, alibi, as well as description Phi has given in the previous timeline. Hmm. Anyway, we need to get her to the infirmary. Give me a hand here. Right. Wait, hold on. This is what's different, guys. There's something I need to tell you. What does she need to tell us? Just stay calm. What? Oh man, I'm... I'm so excited for this. What? Look to the right. My right or your right? Your right. What the heck? There's another bomb? How did we not notice that? This... This is a bomb. Exactly. I'm pretty sure someone didn't move it here from the crew quarters. So this is good to note because... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It all makes sense. Not everything, but <laughs> that was that was over dramatic. The, the PDA thing that can be connected, that we found in the safe in the control room, that can be something we use to defuse bombs. Yes, I think that's one of our answers, at least. But... Let's think about this really quick. There is a bomb in the gardens that wasn't there in our previous timeline. Who was in the gardens? It was not the K, Quark, and Alice crew, right? It was Tendoji, Dio, and Clover. So, that immediately puts those three under suspicion. Who was in the crew quarters in the last timeline? Well, that was us. Phi, Alice, and myself, Sigma. There's no overlap there. In, in my head, that makes it unlikely that people are planting this while they're, you know, potentially is trying to escape from these places. Instead, somebody amidst the chaos that occurs between these is likely planting them. Hmm. Yeah, especially because in the previous timeline, we essentially confirmed that it wasn't already present. Granted, things could have happened differently, so it's not 100%, but but very unlikely. Huh. I think something worth noting is, how does Phi want to play this, right? She told us about the bomb, which is a good thing. Makes her more trustworthy, in my opinion. It, I mean, we've all played Among Us, though, right? And she could just be, you know, reporting her own body, for, for all we know. But... I'm curious to see how she wants to strategize, let's just not say anything and see if somebody tries to lead us here, for example, or if somebody acts suspicious about visiting the garden or something like that. Hmm. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's an entirely different bomb. Look at the number on the side. Yeah, it looks like one as opposed to three. It says one. The one in the crew quarters said three. And that's the one that exploded in our premonition. Crap. Then there's no question, huh? I've got more good news. Just think about the numbers for a moment. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, oh, well, where's number two, right? You're saying there's a two bomb out there somewhere. I can't be sure, but it does seem pretty likely. Or it could just be an elaborate prank. I know there's like a there's a common idea for a prank where it's like, oh, you release three pigs in like a school building or something and name or write on them one, two, and four, right? So, you know, they never give up uh, trying to find pig number three. But darn it. That means we're talking about an explosion this size of three tons of TNT. Yeah. Who said it? Quark. 
Clover, Temyoji, and Dio investigated the garden. There was also a chance someone else said it. Yeah, we were just thinking about that before, right? Because we know from our previous experience with the crew quarters, somebody didn't plant that. Although, while we investigated the crew quarters, we were not able to check that area that had the bomb, right? It wasn't visible to us. And there's no overlap between the crew, the, the set of people that investigated the crew quarters last time, before the bomb was identified, and the people that investigated the bee garden before the bomb was planted this time. So really it is still open. Anyone could have come here after they left and before we showed up. Anyway, we need to move Alice. It is worth noting though, where are these bombs coming from, right? It seems like it'd be a little bit bulky to keep on your personnel at any given time, right? Help me out here. Alice was lighter than I'd expected, and fine, I managed to set off toward the infirmary at a brisk trot. Let's see if this is the same. Nope, still not. So that was very pertinent. Let's see if this is the same. Nope, still different. Okay. Alright, please pay attention, everyone. You need to hear this. The Adam has finished scanning Alice. What did it say? Her results are identical to Quark's. She has also been infected with Radical 6. Still supposedly different. Phi had called everyone else back after I'd brought Alice to the infirmary. Seven sets of eyes widened as Luna spoke. Oh no! No. What's going to happen to her? Like I said before, there's only one way to cure Radical Six. It's a special antiviral treatment. Is this really not the same? I guess not. Whether or not there's any around here, though, this is probably what's going to be different. No. No. I'm trying to think. We obviously found that vial in Quark's pocket, right? And that was only the case when Tenyoji was going to lift up Quark, right? To move him to the treatment center. That's why he was lifted up. That's what I was trying to remember. If we don't know about a treatment center, they may not take Quark and or Alice to the treatment center. They may never lift up Quark's body and find that vial. In their desperacy, they may find a vial somewhere else. And putting that information together, we might get our answer for that other timeline. Or this timeline might just be more dismal for the time being. Oh, Alice. I don't want you to die. Please. Please don't die. I don't want to be alone. Clover wrapped her arms around Alice's unconscious body and began to sob. I don't remember this from before. None of us had the heart to pull her off, so all we could do was stand and watch uncomfortably. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. So this is pretty bad. Quark and Alice are both knocked out. Alice was the solo, right? And who was Alice with? It was Quark and Kay, right? If so, Quark, Alice are both out knocked out. Alice is going to default to Ally. What's K going to do for this Ambidex game? Right? It all comes down to their decision. All players, please enter your votes. Screw you, Dio, for putting us in this position in the first place, right? Okay, so... I mean, what, what K does is going to be huge here. Because if K chooses to betray Alice, and as a result get to nine points, that could be big. 
if K chooses to ally, K's at eight points, can't quite escape just yet, but saves Alice's life. Whew, that's big. If no vote is recorded before the deadline is passed, any non voting parties will automatically ally. Honestly, you know what's not a bad strategy, Sigma, is、uh, use all of that brawn that you've got and keep everybody in this room so nobody goes to the Ambidex room and is able to vote. If you're literally able to confirm that every single person cannot vote, well, then by default, every person will choose ally and everybody's points will go up. That's a pretty compelling strategy, if you ask me. Oi. Uh, guys, I think we should get back to the warehouse. And honestly, if you're able to confirm that everybody can stay in that room, anybody who wants to leave is suspicious, right? That's actually a pretty good strategy, if you ask me. If there's, there, maybe there's some gaping hole in that strategy. Obviously, we can't just rely on Sigma's brawn to keep everybody trapped here. But if you suggest, hey, why don't we all just stay here? After the Ambidex game starts, and we'll all automatically ally, and everybody gets two points, and then we'll all eventually be able to escape through the nine door. Anybody who really vehemently opposes that is inherently suspicious, right? Hmm. Anyways. What about Alice and Quark? I guess we're just gonna have to leave them behind. No! I'm not leaving. Clover. I'm staying here. So, this is complicating things, obviously. Quark, I believe, is anesthetized for a couple hours. We don't need to worry about him harming himself. Alice, on the other hand, has only collapsed. She hasn't woken up with as much zeal as Quark had when he woke up. And as a result, would we consider giving her some anesthetic to make sure that while we're putting in our votes over the next 10 15 minutes, she doesn't hurt herself, right? And if Clover stays here, Clover was with Dio and Temyoji. Why is this incredibly important? I think Temyoji was a solo, right? So Clover and Dio are paired together. Dio is scheming and super sus, <laughs> right? From the very first Ambidex game, it seemed like he was not on board with Ally, and Quark really had to twist his wrist, or twist his leg, <laughs> to,、um, to get him to choose Ally. So Dio is likely to choose Betray. The other thing to consider is Tenmyoji was insistent on working together with Clover and Dio because Tenmyoji really wants to pick Ally. He wants both him and his opponent to choose Ally, and he wanted to earn Clover's trust. Even if he did successfully earn Clover's trust during this past escape room, he no longer can capitalize on that and instead has to interact with Dio as his opponent. And then if he is suspicious of Dio, as I would be, And understandably chooses Betray, he then has less to work with to gain Clover's trust in the future. So it puts Tenmyoji in particular in a really rough situation if Clover stays behind too. Like, heck, I'm gonna leave Alice all alone. She's going to be fine. I don't know if I'd make that promise, Luna. Of course. <laughs> you guys comment on it all the time, but it's like Nick just like rambles on about speculations about this thing, and then like 10 seconds later, game answers and completely walls off part of that speculation. But oh well, it's, it's fun, anyways. I gave her some Soparil. She'll just be sleeping like Quark. I don't care. I just. I just want to stay with her. She shouldn't have to be all by herself. So, this. How Clover. How strongly Clover is reacting is offering some insight, though it's still a little bit nebulous, into their relationship and potentially what they've been through since the game of 999 ended. Shikatane. Whatever. Yeah, Dio's like, good riddance, I just want to vote Betray all by myself. She can do what she wants. Huh? I see. Oh. 
So I had that wrong. Dio and Tenmyoji's opponent in the next AB game is Clover. Dio and Tenmyoji are teaming up. Interesting, and if Clover stays, they're a guaranteed ally, right? If she doesn't vote, then she'll default to ally. Which, I don't think I need to mention, would be pretty uh, favorable for Dio. Yeah. Part of the question is... Hmm... That struggle between Dio and Temyoji inside the AV room would be very fierce. If she stays, he's got an easy round. Whoa, whoa, what are you saying? You think I'm gonna choose Betray? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I agree with you, Fi. Am I wrong? Yes. Of course I'm going to pick Ally. For one, Temyoji's going to be in there with me. I can't just ignore his opinion and make my own choice. He's basically confirming that he, if anybody, would be the one to choose Betray amongst the two of them. But he's still asserting he wouldn't. Right? No, I won't be going. I can't leave Quark here when he's like this. No! <laughs> no! Temyoji, you're the good influence. Interesting. Well, this... This Ambidex game is going to really reveal a lot about Dio. I'll be staying, just like Clover. I will say, when you consider that there may be more rounds after this, Dio cannot reach 9 points at the moment. I believe he's at 5 points because of the ally with Luna and, um, and Quark earlier. Although, that maybe that wasn't it. There was an ally, and I think he was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's at 5 points. Even if he betrays and gets 3 points as opposed to 2 points, he can't reach 9. So anything that would decrease the likelihood of him getting future points after this is really not advantageous. He really should pick ally because if he picks ally, no matter whether he chooses betray or ally in the future round, he gets 9 points. That gives him a lot of credibility, a lot of trustworthiness. Um, when working in the next AB round, because people know there's literally no advantage to him picking Betray as opposed to Ally, because either way he'll get to 9 points. Interesting. But also, not everybody's rational, especially when they have, you know, 10 minutes to think about it in a life or death situation. <laughs> hey, come on now, what is this? <laughs> Knock it off, Dio. He's too smart to let you make a scapegoat out of him. Yes, Fi calling him out! What the heck? Why are you so suspicious of me? Because you activated the AP game when nobody was there! Um, yes? What if Dio stays behind too? Yes, exactly! This is what I was just saying like five minutes ago. Why doesn't everybody stay behind? If Clover, Temyoji, and Dio all don't vote, then everyone allies, right? Alright, good base case. Let's do a little bit of induction, and then BAM! Everybody should do this! Oh? You don't know? No what? This. You didn't find a note like this one? Huh? Wait, what's this? We found it in the archives. Ah, so whatever this is, this explains why I wouldn't have known up until this point, right? <laughs> Well, there sure as heck wasn't anything like that in the garden. We didn't find one in the control room, either. Hmm. Interesting. Apparently, only the Archive had one. What does it say? Why don't you read it for us, Sigma? 
I took the note from him and, still slightly confused, began to read. Here are, here are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not an option. If both parties refuse to vote, then everybody gets penalized. In other words, one person out of every color group of their of three has to vote. Well, that's pretty important to note, and that completely obliterates the strategy I was so adamant about a couple minutes ago. <laughs> Classic, right? You see? At least one member of each trio must vote. Otherwise, I also will say that given that K, well, I don't know if K really stands to benefit, but if K, K's motive is to actually not have other people succeed, I don't know why that would be the case, but if K wanted other people to do poorly, K could have also just kept quiet about uh, this note, right? Because K found the note with Quark and Alice. And so if K doesn't mention it, nobody else is going to. And so if K wanted everybody to find out the hard way that you get penalized when nobody from a trio votes, he could have very easily done that, right? That means K has to vote. Quark and Alice certainly aren't in any condition to. If he doesn't, all three of them are screwed. And K has a very easy ally, right? Which is actually really helpful because if he does do that ally, Alice also gets an extra two points, puts her at three, which takes her out of, I don't know, like imminent death in the next AB game that comes after. <clears throat> Wait a second. K's got six BP right now. His opponent is going to have to default to ally. That means if K chooses betray, he's going to have nine points. That's absolutely true. We also don't know, I mean, we don't know if K is going to do that, right? Is K trustworthy or not? This is going to be a big decision. This is going to be a really big AB game, guys. Like, huge. I'm super eager to see what actually happens. It is also worth noting, though, that if K achieves 9 points, K can leave through the door, but doesn't have to, right? You needn't worry. I have every intention of choosing ally. Oh, give me a break. You expect us to just swallow your crap? Oh dear. Dio, please think for a moment. You do realize that Alice currently only has one BP, don't you? If I were to betray her, what would happen? Anyone whose BP drops to zero gets penalized, just like when you break the rules. I am not so desperate to escape that I would be willing to kill. Therefore, I will definitely choose ally. Indeed, I really have no choice. Unless, of course, I wish to become a murderer. Pretty compelling. But now you have, like, 20 seconds. <laughs> Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. We don't have time to argue about this. There's only one solution. Clover, you're going to have to go vote for us. What? Not Dio. Not Temyoji. Clover? So, so Temyoji and Dio are the pair. Clover is the single. If Clover knows there's going to be an ally, I think Temyoji should be the one to go. Right? Huh? What does that mean? What? Did I use big words? It means this. i never seen someone move that fast before, let alone someone as old as Temyoji. What? In the blink of an eye, he covered the few feet between himself and Dio, and slammed a closed fist into the other man's chest. What? <laughs> Temyoji getting aggressive and physical? I don't like that. 
I mean, clearly nobody really trusts Dio at the moment. Tamioji's pissed. And <clears throat> I guess if it's between him and Clover, I, I mean, both of them are claiming to want to stay for the sake of the person they care a lot about. But I think Tamioji, again, wants to earn Clover's trust. Clover, I think, wants to prove that she's not a murderer. And so Tamioji is really just putting all of his trust in Clover here. <laughs> Dio fell to his knees, wheezing for air. Tamyoji waited a half second to make sure he was down, then turned to look at Clover. So, He's not going to stay down forever. Get out of here, Clover. But, but... You and Kay are in the same position now. I've only got one BP just like Alice. Interesting. So long as Temyoji doesn't vote, Clover's only choice is to choose ally. Yeah, so it's it's clever, although risky in that he is literally trusting everything with Clover. Clover could very well be a murderer. I mean, shout out to 999, right? Probably my favorite ending from that game. But I don't know. It's um, it's a risky but logical if you work with under the assumption that you know you can trust Clover. I guess also, given the time restraint, it is really easy to say, look, now you're in the exact same position as Kay, who just, you know, walked through the entirety of the reasoning behind, well, you have to choose ally unless you want to be a murderer. And so if you're able to very quickly say, this is exactly your situation, you can very quickly convey, you have to choose ally, right? Make it very clear what the logic behind this decision is to Clover. Hmm. Admittedly, there is a chance she might kill me. Are... Are you saying you trust me with your life? That's about the size of it. Well, what the heck are you standing around for? Get. You don't need to worry about Alice. I'll keep a good eye on her, I promise. Now get moving. You still don't trust me? No. That's not it at all. I will say though, this event opened up a bit of a Pandora's box. Physicality, brute violence, force is now has now entered the game, right? People are willing to, and potentially will, use their own bodies, use physical violence to prevent people from voting, or maybe intimidating people to vote in a particular manner, right? There's no limit on that, and that door has just been opened by Temyoji. I trust you, I just... You've got to go, Clover, go! Three minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. We need to go. Come on! Okay. It's so funny, actually, I... It's obviously, you know, many hours into this game at the moment. But Clover's Japanese name is Yotsuba, and does anybody, has anybody else seen uh, Quintessential Quintuplets? It's a, it's a show that I actually enjoyed a lot more than I expected, um, but now I can't dissociate Clover and Yotsuba from that show. Take care of Alice. She'll be fine. And that seemed to finally satisfy her, and we were off. We ran as fast as we could, leaping through doors and tearing through rooms on our way back to the warehouse. Oh boy, what's gonna happen when Dio gets up, right? If it's literally only Quark, Alice, Tenmyoji, and Dio left alone in this room, Tenmyoji and Dio being the only ones conscious, that's a recipe for disaster. They could, for all we know, participate in the Ambidex game and then come back to the infirmary and find Tenmyoji beaten to a pulp on the floor. It seems Temyoji's actually incredibly fit and a lot more physically capable than his age would let on. But for all we know, Dio could be, I don't know, just as strong or stronger, right? I would I would actually expect that. So anyways, everybody ready? Yeah. Can we talk with Phi beforehand? You've all got a moon card, right? Yes, we do. Good. Then let's go. 
We're not gonna have a chance to talk with Fi? What? Four AB gates yawned open as we swiped our cards. The fifth one, the one Dio had opened, stayed empty. The sixth, which would have been Alice's, remained unopened. Kay and Clover quickly entered the second and third from the right. Luna and I headed toward our own. No. Hold on a minute. What is it? You're going to choose Ally, right? Yeah, why do you ask? Of course we are. You promise? Sure, I promise. Cross your heart? <laughs> Cross my heart. You're gonna be in a world of hurt if you double cross me. Don't sweat it. I'm a man of my word. Fi frowned but said nothing and disappeared into her own AB room, the second from the left. Luna and I nodded to one another and headed for the last one, the leftmost room. It's Fi. I, I want to choose Ally. So we'll click start here and we have the chance to vote, right? don't have a lot of time either. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. What are you going to do? Well, I don't have a choice, do I? I promised. I said I'd choose Ally. I mean, obviously, if we choose Betray and Fi chooses Ally, we have nine points, right? And then we can leave. Maybe alone. Maybe we get killed by somebody out of rage, but I don't really know. That's pretty odd, isn't it? I know that this is a big flowchart branching point. I actually don't know that, but I would bet a lot that this is a big branching point for the flowchart. I'm so curious to see what would happen if we choose Betray, but I know putting myself in Sigma's shoes, I would choose Ally here. Both Fi and I agreed on Betray before, but since then I feel like we've had a lot of time to earn each other's trust, and importantly, we had the chance to talk beforehand. We have leeway, so that should we get betrayed by Fi, well, we're not, you know, on death row just yet. So, I think Ally is, well, Ally is definitely what I would pick in this situation, but... Yes, but Fi has six BP. If she betrays us, yeah, she'll have nine points, I know. Right. What do you think we should do, Luna? I... It's your decision, Sigma. What? Luna's not even going to weigh in? I was hoping that she would so that we could get some inkling about her own decision-making process, right? From the first AB game, we have the impression that she'd be very inclined to pick Ally, but she doesn't seem as adamant about it as I expected. I'll be in the same position either way. What? You have 6 BP too, don't you? That means that if we betray Fi and she chooses Ally, then I would have 9 points. Yes. You see? In either case, I could end up with someone in my group reaching their goal. Twenty seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. That's it. We don't have any time left. You have to make a choice. Are you sure this is okay with you? Yes. Alright. Here we go, guys. I turn to face the machine. Ten seconds will remain until Ambidex game polling closes. What am I going to choose? Come on, Sigma! Make a choice! Ally or betray? <clears throat> or rather, you could potentially just not, right? For for me, that's the equivalent to what we're going to choose. This is impossible! Are you kidding me right now? Ally. One second left. 
We choose ally. Fi, please don't betray us. If, I mean, I really feel like in this timeline in particular, we have the chance to to bond with Fi, especially noting that bomb, which never came up in conversation later on, right? I think that does indicate some degree of, of trust. But there we have it. Round two of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse in the next episode. Ooh, cliffhanger, guys. Sorry, not really sorry. I'm going to have the chance to record right after this episode because I'm dying to see the results, and I'm sure you guys are too. But I have to keep you guys, you know, foaming at the mouth ready for the next episode, right? So... <laughs> What do you guys think is going to happen? Those of you who have played the game obviously don't say anything, but if you're watching blind, do you think Fi betrays us? Yes or no? How do you think Clover is going to vote? I feel pretty confident K is going to choose ally. I think Clover is going to choose ally, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm really curious to see if any of you guys are more skeptical of Clover or Fi than, than I am. Maybe I'm naively optimistic as I mentioned earlier in the Let's Play, but anyways, until the next episode when we find out the results of our second AP game, this is Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.